Well, hello, Quest. It's good to see you. This is Sunday, September 26th, so the day after Christmas. So let me just wish you a day late Merry Christmas. And we decided not to have services this day uh, for several different reasons, but one is where it landed in the week. One is just the nature of where we're at uh, with people being uh, pretty tired. Um, but we didn't want to skip. There's nothing sacred, if you will, about uh, Sunday mornings and, and required to gather. What is sacred is that when the Lord tell, tells us not to forsake uh, gathering together, because there's something really incredible about the body of Christ coming together and being together, being face to face, encouraging one another, uh, because we live in unique and challenging days. And so uh, we thought we'd put this out. You could be with your family today, uh, enjoy the day. Uh, and be back together when we get back together on January 2nd. But uh, we wanted you to be able to put something out there for you to kind of use to stimulate your heart and your mind uh, even today. And so, as you know, during uh, December, we have had the theme of light up the darkness. And we're, we really felt like we live in a time of unique darkness, uh, and people are struggling with it. Everyone's struggling with it, whether believers in Jesus or not, uh, people feel it. People are experiencing it. And so we are, in a sense, wrapping that up, but in a sense, we're not wrapping it, at all, at a, wrapping it up at all. We're really just beginning it because this doesn't solve it. This doesn't end it. This doesn't could put a, you know, a nice little cover on it and then let's ship it off. Uh, but this is the beginning of our lives again uh, in the midst of all this darkness that we feel and experience and is wrestling around. You know, we've said before that maybe the words that describe the last couple of years for almost everybody, uh, one would probably be uh, deeply disruptive. It has been incredibly disruptive. The pandemic has changed so many things and impacted us in so many ways. In the midst of all of that, there's been a tremendous amount of cultural or societal conflict. A lot of collisions, a lot of anger, a lot of fighting, a lot of disagreement, a lot of people who seem to be incredibly angry uh, about things. And you can almost say almost everything seems to be a place of conflict. And connected to that, but in a unique other way, too, there's this political wrangling that has been going on for quite a while. And, and it continues. In fact, maybe it seems to be ramping up a little bit. Uh, but there is a lot of disruptive uh, things going on. There is a, it seems to have disrupted in some very, very unique and profound ways, especially the pandemic. It has disrupted our rhythms of life. Uh, it seems like there's almost uh, summer came and went, and was it really a summer? Was it really a spring? Was it really a fall? Uh, it almost feels like like the 25th month of 2020 right now, right? We've been through all 2021, but was it just a long continuation of 2020? Uh, and so it just feels hard, the rhythms of our lives, which we were designed to experience. God made rhythms of life. That's why he gave us seasons. Uh, and then every part of the country, every part of the world has those seasons in a little bit different way. Uh, but we all have seasons of life and those have been profoundly disrupted. It feels like just one season and it's been a bad one. Um, and, and then we also have this idea uh, that uh, our relationships have been disrupted uh, in every way, shape, or form. I know that for a long time, there were people who hadn't seen their loved ones for weeks, maybe months. There were even times when people didn't see each other for a year, couldn't be with one another, couldn't touch one another. And, and sometimes maybe that was overblown. Uh, but people were trying to figure out how to handle the situation. But the rhythm, rhythms of our lives have been disrupted and the relationships of our lives have been disrupted. It's been a lot of tension, a lot of pressure on people, and people began to react out of that. Uh, and they have seemed to have kind of uh, 
entered into this place where they feel incredibly wounded and they're weary. They're wounded and they're weary. And people have, have kind of retreated uh, to their own corners in life. You know, it felt like maybe this would bring people together. But actually, I think in lots of ways across our, our culture, across our community, frankly, even in our church, people have kind of retreated to their corners, chosen sides to be on, retreated to their corners, and, and not only retreated to their corners, but maybe in another way, people have kind of pulled the pins on the hand grenades and in their corners and having built a wall, they simply lob those hand grenades at each other and began to attack one another, and isolate from one another, and, and judge one another. And, and that's been really hard. That's out there in the culture, but also can happen inside the church. And I think that's incredibly disruptive uh, and very, very uh, wounding. And people are wounded, and they're weary, and they're tired. You hear so many people, even people who are very pro this or pro that, they just say, man, I'm tired. Tired of fighting the fight. Tired of this whole thing. And I think we can understand that and appreciate that. Because that's really difficult. And I think it's into that kind of situation that the light of the gospel can penetrate. It's into that where the light of life is what the scriptures call it. The light of life can saturate. It's into that kind of a situation that the light of Christ can permeate. And it's into that or the, the light that he's called us to be, that he wants us to, to be, be the light and through us that he can radiate. Because all the other sides that we take, there's no real answers. The solution to all this is not a political answer. This is not a, a societal answer. There is a spiritual answer to the brokenness of the spirit of man inside our rebellion against God and our rebellion against each other, the solution to that is a spiritual one. And it's into this very imperfect world that we live. And we keep wishing it wasn't imperfect, but it is and it always will be until the Lord comes back. It's into this very imperfect world that we can be people of hope. Because there is a hope and it's, it's found in a person. It's found in Jesus Christ himself. God who became man and lived among us with the purpose of sacrificing his life and that his grace, which cost him his whole life, that that grace could be given to us. It, it, it is the hope of the world. It's Christ himself. And we can be people of hope. That we can be people of peace. In a world that's fighting each other and attacking one another, may we not join their group. But would we be people of peace? Would we be people of added value, if you will? We use that term. But to be of added value to this culture, that we'd be different, we'd stand out uh, in a unique way in the love of Christ. You know, it makes me think about when Joshua... Uh, and the Israelites were coming out of Egypt, and for 40 years they wandered in the desert, and then eventually God called them to enter into the promised land. And right after they had crossed over the river Jordan at flood stage, and they were approaching Jericho, that Joshua approached, was, was out looking at Jericho, and there was a man who approached him with his sword that was drawn. And he's an imposing figure. And Joshua goes, oh my gosh, who are you? And he says, hey, take off your, your sandals, Joshua. You're standing on holy ground. Very similar to when, Joshua, when Moses was on Mount Sinai. God said, take off your sandals. You're on, you're on holy ground. He took off his sandals, uh, Joshua did. And he, and he says to this, to this imposing military figure, says it was a man, but it seems as if maybe he looked like a man, maybe an angel figure or a pre-incarnate Christ, or we're not quite sure. But he, he said, uh, and, and Joshua asked him, uh, well, whose side are you on? 
you could tell Joshua was hoping he was going to say, I hope you're on our side uh, and not on their side. But whose side are you on? And this imposing figure responded in effect by saying that I didn't come here to take sides. I came here to take over. And, and I wonder if that might be something that would be instructional for us. In this day and age of tremendous disruption and tremendous conflict of woundedness and weariness, that we would say, we're not going to take sides on the left or on the right, but we're going to say, Christ, you take over. We're going to follow you because you came here to take over. You're not going to be blue and you're not going to be red. You're going to be the Christ of the entire universe the savior of the world, I came here to take over and we'll say, we're going to follow you. It'll be a radical change from the typical cultural conflict. But that we would be people of grace and of truth, mixed together perfectly for every moment. Now that's a high calling. But Christ can do that in our lives and we'll surrender to him. And so I wonder if 2022 might be a year where we would be obediently surrendered followers of a glorious Christ. We're willing to lay down our weapons and let Christ permeate and be pre preeminent in our lives, in our church, in our community. That 2022 might be different than every other year in a unique way. And that we would go back to the, to the basics. And we'd say, Lord, what it means to follow you as, as surrendered followers is to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength and to love our neighbor as if they were us. It's not rocket science, folks. This is really basic stuff, but it is powerful. It's worth getting up for every morning. And asking the Lord to fill us with his spirit, fill us with his strength, fill us with his grace, fill us with his love, fill us with his truth, so that we might love him deeply and we might love our neighbor in a profoundly powerful way. I think that's what he's calling us to in 2022. So on this day, after Christmas 2021, may your day be rich May it be full of love. May you enjoy one another. And may we get up tomorrow morning and be ready to roll for what he has called us to. All right, you guys, thank you. Merry Christmas. Love you. Be well.